Welcome back to the Corona Chronicles. We are in chapter 17 of the book of Revelation and we have just had at the end of uh, chapter 16 we've had the seventh bowl of God's wrath poured out and we've heard a voice from the throne saying it is done and now we're in verse 1 of chapter 17. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits by many waters. With her, the kings of the earth committed adultery, and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into a desert. There I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was covered with blasphemous names and had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet and was glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. She held a golden cup in her hand filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. The name written on her forehead was a mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and of the abominations of the earth. I saw that the woman was drunk with the blood of God's holy people, the blood of those who bore testimony to Jesus. When I saw her, I was greatly astonished. Then the angel said to me, why are you astonished? I will explain to you the mystery of the woman and of the beast she rides, which has the seven heads and the ten horns. Yeah, so we're still, we're still looking at the judgment of God that is being poured out against the system of this world, aren't we? And uh, although the chapter divisions in our modern Bibles are put in to help us break it up, really we're in the same kind of episode of time aren't we and um, it's just interesting looking at some of the things that are similar and some of the things that are different so in chapter 16 um, we were picking up that there was a lot of exodus language being used um, so we were being taken back to that story where Pharaoh is being judged and uh, Pharaoh is being uh, and, and the nation of Egypt is being judged with these terrible miraculous kind of judgments before God's people are rescued and uh, Egypt really was seen as the slave master, and the slave master is destroyed, and then the people of God can go free. Mm. But here, uh, Babylon is much more of a, um, a seductress, mm. you know. So she's not a slave master, she's a tempter. So this is looking at the side of the world which tempts, tempts into sin, and tempts into adultery, and tempts into blasphemy. And uh, this angel is wanting to say that aspect of the world too is falling and is going to be destroyed. Yeah, um, and it's and I suppose this is why, one of the reasons why there is this group of collective people against God because they have been fooled into thinking that they're in, in the right, yeah. aren't they? There is, a, there is a nice message that you're a good person, um, you know, come and enjoy these good things in the world, and this is good, uh, but actually it's, it's going to be shown for what it is, isn't it, mm. um, here? Yeah. And you, yeah. were, you were talking earlier quite helpfully about the, the witch in the Narnia stories mm. who, who you said she's very beautiful and she is striking um, and she's even able to conjure Turkish delight. Yeah. But it's kind of out of, it's magical, it's out of thin air, it's, it has no substance to it. And then as the story goes on, um, the boy is in prison and he's given stale bread and water, mm. so there's no substance to it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there's that famous saying, isn't there? Not all that glitters is gold. Yes. And that's definitely true here. You know, she glitters, mm. you know, verse four, mm. dressed in purple and scarlet, glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls, golden cups in her hands. You know, she glitters. Yeah. She would be on the front cover of Vogue magazine, yeah. wouldn't she? Yeah. She's desirable. She looks good. Mm. She's got the things that are rich. She's got the, 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 the upper class lifestyle. And so, in one sense, she's much more appealing yep. than the slave masters of Egypt. Yes. You know, she, she tempts us. And that's why this language of adultery is so common. Um, it's not just to be read, you know, flatly, as we would think of adultery. But in the Bible, um, that's how, that's one of the ways sin is described. It's breaking your covenant with God mm. and being seduced into following other gods. Mm. And uh, that's, that's definitely what she's about. You know, the golden cup is full of abominable things and the filth of her adultery. She wants to tempt people away. Yeah. And you can imagine for these first Christians, you know, living under Roman rule, uh, they, they may have thought in both of these categories, like Rome is the cruel slave master 
but my goodness, she's powerful. Mm. And, you know, I might be tempted to give up the testimony of Jesus and to go with the glittering power of Rome. Yeah. And so both aspects, I think, would have really touched, touched, touched them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And um, she is kind of aping God as well, isn't she? Mm. So she's, allure, she's uh, setting herself up as an alternative, a viable alternative. So she's sort of sat on this beast it's kind of like her throne. She wears purple, which is like a royal colour, isn't it? Um, she glitters with gold, all these things that, you know, the throne is um, ornate and, and royal. And then this golden cup in her hand. We've just heard about the cup that God has, which is filled with his wrath. Mm. So here's her holding a cup. There are lots of similarities mm. here. But mm. um, as you say, she's, um, she is, she's yeah, drunk mm. with the blood of God's holy people. Mm. Um, this is not uh, the wine of, of, of righteous wrath. This is the blood of God's mm. holy people. And that's, that's really helpful, isn't it? Just to, just to draw that out from verse 6. Because um, the most unsettling villains in reality and in fiction mm. are not the ones that are obviously cruel from the start. They're yeah. the ones who pretend to be nice. It's like you were saying about the Wicked Witch. Um, you know, and, and, and you can imagine, you know, this... this, this uh, this adulterous, looking, friendly and kind, but what is she about? She is about the slaughter of Christ and Christ's people. Yeah. And she loves violence and mm. she loves murderer, yeah. uh, being a murderer. So when you take off her glittering dress, she's a, she's a murderer mm. underneath that. Yeah. And she wants to destroy God's people and to blaspheme against him. And, uh, and yet, you know, as we say, this, this, is, this is in part for the encouragement of God's people um, you know, we aren't to be in any doubt. She she has an authority. The mm -hmm. beast has an authority of some kind. But verse one, I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute. Yeah. You know that she is going to fall. And um, perhaps the reason this is being repeated so often is because if you were a Christian in the first century, um, living with the reality of the Roman Empire, mm. you would want lots of persuasion that it was going to fall. Yes. You would want to be told over and over again, <laughs> wouldn't you? Yeah. you know, every aspect of this is yeah. coming down. Yeah. And, uh, you know, similarly in our age, you know, when we're tempted to betray Christ mm. and to abandon the testimony of his word, we have only to remember it's falling, it's falling, yeah. it's going to fall. Yeah, um, yeah so perhaps we'll um, pause there for today.